Number eight, letter A. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the force on each foot of the horse, the two that are on the ground, assuming the center of mass of the horse is midway between the feet. And the total mass of the horse and the rider is 500 kilograms. All right, um, so first here's the picture. All right, and they're assuming that the uh, center of mass is located right in between the two feet, okay? So um, if we had to think about this, right, we're trying to find the force on the feet. And so we can kind of get a feel uh, that, you know, there should be some, not horizontal force, but some force at an angle here straight down, all right? So basically what I'm going to do is what I, over here for letter A, I copied and pasted uh, this torque picture from number six. So if you need a little help in figuring out how we came up with this uh, picture, please see number six. Uh, what I added here was I added the answer uh, to number six, which was that the a force the wall is, is uh, exerting on the horse is going to be uh, 1,430 uh, newtons. Okay, so that's what I forgot there. I forgot the uh, newton value, and that's in terms of newtons. Okay, so uh, basically what we need to do now is we need to find in black here, this black part is kind of the way that the uh, force on those feet are directed. And right? if we were to think about that, I think that should make sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a coordinate system first. And I'm going to draw in my force components, okay? Now the tricky part here is that this is essentially a torque picture, and what I have to do is take this torque picture and kind of boil it down into now a free body diagram that just involves the forces. So now in order to do so, and this is the tricky part, is that, I mean, it's not tricky after you see it, but it's tricky in knowing how to, to uh, set this up. Uh, what we want to do is we want to take these two forces, right? There's a force that the wall is exerting on the horse, and then there's also a weight, right, uh, on the on the feet, or that the or that the gravity is uh, causing on that particular horse. And what we have to do is we have to draw those two vectors in this diagram. Now you might say, well, they're separated by a certain distance here. Don't worry about that. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find the resultant, okay? The resultant of these two forces. Now the resultant of those two forces have nothing to do with their particular distances here. So what I can do is I can essentially place one vector in, All right, I'm gonna do the uh, force the wall is exerting, so that's going to be in this right-handed direction, right? So this is 1430 Newtons. And then I'm going to put the weight at the uh, tip, right? Because I want to come up with the resultant vector. Okay, so this is the weight of the horse. Remember, the weight of the horse is the mass multiplied by gravity, so I can simply plug that in as 500 uh, times 9.80. And the resultant vector now will be from the start point to the end point, right? So there's the resultant. So this is the resultant vector, and this vector will represent the total force. Okay, I know we gotta find on each foot, and we'll do that in a second, but this vector will represent the total force on both feet in the picture. All right, um, so now how do you solve this? Well, you can do it in a couple ways, but I think the easiest way would be to use Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a reworked Pythagorean's theorem, right, that says the resultant vector will be equal to the square root of the sum of all the x values squared plus the sum of all the y values squared. Here's my x, here's my y. All right, now w I know is negative, but remember you're gonna square the term in here, so whether it's negative or positive, it's gonna come out to be positive at the end, all right? So don't worry too much about the sign in here. Uh, so this is gonna be uh, 1430 squared. And I think the real value here is like 14, I don't remember, 29 or something like that, and maybe an eighth. Doesn't really matter, this should be close enough, all right? Uh, so plus then the sum of the y values so that's gonna be 500 times 9.8 squared. All right, let's see what we get for the resultant vector. So calculator, square root, 1430 squared, plus parenthesis 500 times 9.8 squared. And we get a value of, now remember this represents the total, okay? So this is the total. So this is gonna be 5,104.4. And now if you want to find the force, remember this is the resultant force here. If you want to find the force on each foot, well, how many feet does the horse have here in the picture? He has uh, two, right? 
obviously there are actually that's a good point actually so there we know that there's four right a horse has four feet essentially um but we're only highlighting two here so uh, we're going to use the value of two so we're going to divide this term down here by two and that now will be the resultant force or let me rewrite this now that's basically going to be equivalent to um, the force on each foot okay and let's see divide that by two and there we go we get about 25 so yeah about 2550 all right and that's newtons on each foot so that would be the uh, answer to letter a and then letter b it says what is the minimum coefficient of friction between the hooves and the ground okay uh, so now what I did for letter B here, here's a diagram. So B's diagram now is basically the same as A's. Oh, I just erased a couple of values there and I added two vectors. Okay. So now uh, remember that the sum of the forces in this problem have to all equal zero. So if you have a weight component, right, that's ex uh, exhibited in the picture right here, that weight component has to be balanced by some force. Right? Well, what force is balancing it? Well, it's the force at the horse's feet directly opposing it, pointing up. So guess what that's called? Oh, the normal force, right? Flashbacks to prior chapters. So now the normal force is the same as the weight, just opposite of direction. So basically, right, the value here, the magnitude we can say is basically 500 times 9.8 because the weight was 500 times 9.8. I know the sign will be different, this should be negative and that should be positive, but we won't really have to worry about the signs too much here for the calculations. Now, same thing here. This is a horizontal force in the problem, and that horizontal force has to be balanced, that force, horizontal force to the right, has to be balanced by some horizontal force to the left. Hmm, well what's the horizontal force to the left that's balancing it? It's the frictional force at the horse's feet, right? Think about this, if the horse was on the slipperiest surface, right? The horse will slide, his feet will give out, and he will fall down. So there's something holding his feet in place. What is that? Well, it's the frictional force, and the frictional force has to point to the left side right, in order to keep his feet in place. So this force exactly balances this force. Okay? So I know the value here, the force of friction. I know it's negative, but again, the, the, we, can, we, we can use it. It doesn't really matter, but... Let's just leave it unit less in here because the picture is telling us, uh, not unit less, uh, let's leave it um, uh, dimensionless essentially uh, without the X and the Ys. So here the frictional force has the same value. Okay, now, how do you find frictional force? Well, remember back to prior chapters that the force of friction, or in static friction that is, I'll actually use a little S down here, the force of static friction will be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. So to find this, just divide out F sub N with the normal force from both sides. And now here we have a formula that says the, actually, let me just move this up slightly. One second, move that up. So here we have the force of static friction divided by the uh, normal force being less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction. So this is what we need to no, in order to find it. And I just talked about the static frictional force here. I called it sub F, but you can call it sub S. It really doesn't matter. I'll erase it quickly. Okay, we'll put in a little S down there. So that's the value there, and then divided by the normal force. Okay, uh, so where's my uh, pen? Here we go. So let's just plug in the numbers. Okay, so here we have 1430 divided by the normal force. And the normal force was 500, right, times 9.8. That would be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction. Plug it on in and let's see what we get. So we get 1430 divided by 5, oops, parenthesis, 500 times 9.8. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. We get a value of 0 0.292. Okay, 292, less than or equal to uh, coefficient of static friction. So really... The value, the minimum uh, value, uh, will be uh, this particular number, 0.292. All right? 
So guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I hope this problem helped. A little tricky because torques and forces and there's vectors all over the place, but uh, through some practice, I think you guys will be able to, you know, come to a, um, a nice equilibrium, so to speak, in terms of your understanding. So uh, just stick with me here. I appreciate it very much. Uh, subscribe if you can. That'd be great. If you can't, no worries. I do hope, though, you're getting some benefit from this. And uh, look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.